In this video we're looking at techniques for building the Newman Miniatures model of the London Northwestern Crampton locomotive Liverpool. For the most part construction is as with all the others in the Newman Miniatures range. As you can see here with the tender, assembly of the various components, basic keeper plates to keep the wheels in as you can see here painted up and a pin for coupling in the case of the tender. If we turn to the locomotive itself Similarly, we have wire handrails, there's a regulator and reverser lever, and a coupling on the back. Here though is where we start to get a little more specific, and there is a bit of prep involved. So, if I show you here, as with some models like the Sterling Single and Engage, there are metal slide bars required. These are simply pieces of one millimetre by half millimetre metal strip cut to just under 12 millimeters long and glued in place whoops, on the pre-prepared slots which will go into the cylinders. Similarly we have the valve gear. Now what we recommend here is keeping the pin as long as possible, sanding it down to about as thin as you can get because clearances on this model are extremely tight and as you might be able to note there is a very slight recess further sanded in just for this area here just to ensure that it fits around the tread of the wheel a little bit more neatly now more about these parts later on turning to the driving wheels a little bit of sanding on the flats of the eccentrics is to be advised. Similarly, of course, sanding down the coupling rods as much as you really can. You need them to be strong, of course, and they are deliberately printed in a versatile strength plastic. But again, there is this question of clearances. You'll see that they're pinned in place and there are pins on the insides of the two parts. Now again you want the gap there to be about as close as possible to the thickness of this but without a risk of them catching. Lastly, and this is an important thing because it's an easy way to save on the clearance point, yes you can um, sand within these but these are a little bit on the fragile side. What is easier is to sand the heads of the pins because that way you're reducing a dome shape to a flat shape and gaining a precious little bit of space. Now once that's all done, what we recommend as the first bit of construction is fitting the front two sets of carrying wheels, not the third one at this particular stage. Then, with the wheels just as you see them here, move this a little bit out of the way, drop the model on so it's resting on all four corners and just double checking the clearance against the frames here. So if I push this along you'll see that the wheels turn. The next stage, and I'll be including some photos because this might not be the clearest in the video, is to drop the drivers in place effectively permanently which takes a little more than you might expect simply because what we want is to have the drivers in, literally just as it's gone there, with the coupling rods beneath these axle boxes but in line with the underside of the splashers. There we go, which leads us on to the next key point which consists of taking our slide bars with their supporting mountings, identifying precisely which one they are, because which way they are, because they are handed. You will notice there is a little L shape to them. So in this case, we've got the one for this side. Holding the model, you slide the end onto the pin. You can see it's at a little angle there, and lever it. Is a little bit fiddly. Whoops, let's try that again. Until you can push, here we go, the slot into position like so. So if I hold the other side, you can now see 
that the rod is in the slide bars. Naturally, you repeat that for the other side. Once you have both of the slide bar sections in place, the model looks like this. Now, as with recommendation for pretty much any model with a mechanical element, testing at each stage is vital. So, again, it's a case of pushing the model backwards and forwards just to make sure that the rods all turn freely. If you find that there's an issue in this particular part, there are two ways of going about it. You can lower the slide bars very slightly just in case the pins foul the top of the sp a, um, splashes. By the same token, and I'm saying this through the benefit of hindsight, you'll at least know this in advance through watching this video, you can always gently chamfer the underside of the end of each splash, so that will make life easier as well. This is why it's also quite useful to make sure that the little blocks holding the slide bars in place are a push fit rather than a glue fit because you don't want it to be too tight that of course it damages the plastic but tight enough that it allows you that little bit of maneuverability. Now we have the rods in place we now turn to the eccentrics as you can see I've dropped the wheel slightly out this is why we don't have a keeper plate on it quite yet and it's a question of taking the part again I will try and put up some photos later and pushing it into the hole, as you can see here, swinging it round and attempting, it is a little fiddly, especially with the second one, little heads up, there we go, to line it up with the centre of the main driving wheel, just like here. Then it's a case of doing the same on the other side and testing that it works. Now that stage with the eccentrics is the most complex of the build, not because of the actual fitting per se, because of the need for fine tuning and fettling. You might find yourself needing to par down the surfaces a bit more, and by the same token the actual curve where it meets the uh, hub of the wheel could equally need a little bit of filing just to make sure that it runs freely. Once it's done however, as you can see here, you should have something which moves smoothly and freely. Not gluing in the eccentrics also means that they can flex a little pending on the state of the track. Next we turn of course to the final keeper plates. So we put a section in to hold the main wheels in place and we add the last wheel set with the two keeper plates. What I would however recommend is double checking this wheel set before fixing it in place just to ensure the clearances as mentioned before all work perfectly fine and so it turns smoothly. The final stage of construction really is more optional than anything. The model comes with a crew, they are in keeping with the model design so that they can fit but you will also notice that you have the upper parts of the reversing gear here there are two little cranks and if you wish to you can attach small pieces of plastic running down to the valve gear itself now these can be attached at the top just a thin little bit of strip but the key thing is of course don't either glue to the bottom part or foul it in order to ensure the mechanism keeps clear. Those can then be painted in place, coal added to the tender and your locomotive is complete. And so we are finished. The LNWR Crampton Liverpool in N-Gage. I hope this video has been of interest showing how to build this model and come up with something quite unusual for your model railway. Thank you for watching.